Hello everyone! Welcome back again to our channel. And uh, ngayong araw pag-uusapan natin ang, or itutuloy natin ang ating discussion sa subject nating personal identification techniques. Medyo natagalan bago tayo magkaroon ulit ng uploads because of the uh, preparation for the midterm and as well as the holidays also. So, um... I hope you're doing well and I do hope that you are always uh, you are all safe today and the coming day despite the things that we are encountering. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to present to you the topics that we will be talking about today. So ito yung mga pag-uusapan natin specifically um pag-uusapan natin yung three principles of fingerprint identification. Pero hindi lang yan, we have additional topics such as the components of fingerprints, the major parts of fingerprint suppression, at pag-usapan din natin yung tinatawag nating three major family of the of fingerprint patterns. Okay? So, uh, I think uh, let's jump into our first topic, which is the principles of fingerprint identification. Ano nga ba yung concept ng principles of fingerprint identification literally we're talking about the justification kung bakit ina-accept ang fingerprint identification maybe as an evidence or uh, why it is accepted why is it accepted into the scientific community yung yung principles na ito is the it makes the the concept of fingerprint identification system valid na kung maalala nyo yung discussion natin with regards to anthropometry so yung 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 anthropometry is anchored to the principles that um uh bakit siya naging katangkap tanggap it's because of these principles such as uh the bone measurement of a certain individual when it is already fully developed will not change for about 20 years. So, yun yung kanyang pinapoint out. Sinasabi niya that uh, this way of establishing identity is valid because the bone measurement of a certain individual once fully developed is constant. Hindi na yan magbabago. So, it, it proves the, the concept. Now, it proves that the idea behind the, the system that is being used or that is being proposed is valid because of these uh, principles. And another principles na ginamit ng anthropometry during its uh, early days is that uh, no two person has the same bone measurement. But uh, later on, it was proven wrong. That is why uh, once one of the principle of, of the... Um, system being used is already debunked no? na na patunayang mali yung prinsipyo yung pinanghahawakan ng isang uh, system is that is already problematic and this the same on what happened to the the concept of anthropometry hindi na siya ginagamit today as a reliable means of establishing identity because Yung isa sa pinaka-importanteng principle ng concept ng anthropometry was already proven wrong. And that is yung tinatawag nating principle of uniqueness. Which means that there are tendencies that same person, specifically those who have uh, biological relation or yung mga tinatawag nating uh, twins, may show the same uh, bone measurement. That is why... Uh, there is no uniqueness in in bone measurement. So, hindi na siya reliable way of establishing identity. So, the same is true with regards to the fingerprint identification system. Kung bakit siya acceptable as a means of establishing identity, it is because of these three principles that a uh, fingerprint identification system has. And those are the following. Uh, number one is we have principle of individuality. Number two is we have the principle of infallibility. And number three is principle of permanency. Itong tatlong principles na ito is very much important in the field of uh, 
fingerprint identification system. Because kung wala itong mga ito, if these principles na, are not established in using fingerprint identification, then definitely I don't think that uh, the concept of fingerprinting as a science will be acceptable to the scientific community and the, the concept or the use of fingerprint identification will be recognized as a reliable means of establishing the identity. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the first principle, yung tinatawag natin, principle of individuality. Yung principle of individuality is anchored on the um, belief that no two fingerprints are exactly the same. Okay, walang fingerprint, walang dalawang fingerprint ang exactly magkaparehas in in their minute detail. If you can remember what Francis Galton uh, said about the the individuality of fingerprint, he noted that the chances of two person to have the same fingerprint is one into one is to sixty four billion. So that is literally impossible to have two persons possessing the same fingerprint. So that proves that fingerprints is indeed very unique. Na, na walang, wala ni isang tao na, ang pwedeng magkaroon ng parehas na fingerprint. Uh, uh, magkaroon, ng pares, magkar, magkaroon ng kaparehas or magkaparehas na fingerprint. Okay? And we are talking about, yung, yung individuality kasi dito is na-establish doon sa tinatawag nating individual characteristic o yung mga unique characteristic. Uh, you will notice that pwedeng mukhang magkapareha sa mga fingerprint patterns natin but when it comes to those minute details, yung mga maliliit na detalye, doon na tayo nagkakaroon ng tinatawag nating individuality. And the chances na magkaroon ng the same fingerprint even even coming from the same person imagine you have um, uh, your fingers no even you yourself wala wala kang makikita diyan na parehas yung fingerprint pattern ng dalawang daliri mo or uh, your other uh, fingers and thumbs no so that is very important to take note that fingerprint is indeed very unique no and that is proven and uh, in in the researches and studies conducted not only by Francis Galton but some other um, expert in the field that indeed the, the concept of fingerprint identification is very unique okay and uh, we have also the principle of infallibility which means that uh, fingerprint is considered as an exact science so there is there there is a process that is this that is being followed in the conduct of fingerprint analysis and fingerprint identification hindi ito basta um, coming up with the conclusion na walang prosesong sinusunod the same is true with other type of science such as dna examination uh, we have iris uh, recognition yung yung mga yun kaparehas din ng fingerprint na gumagamit ng tinatawag nating process valid fra, uh, valid process um, valid scientific process so fingerprint is an exact science they're following rigid rules in establishing individuality no? they're they're using or they're observing the scientific process in coming up with with a conclusion whether the same two uh, with whether uh, whether two specimen of fingerprints are one and the same or different so uh, fingerprint identification itself no, is an exact science they f they they are following yung tinatawag nating scientific procedures okay so with that no, again that is one of the important principle that governs the print uh, fingerprint identification also and lastly we have yung tinatawag nating principle of permanency no? permanency which means of, uh, from the word permanent the fingerprint patterns that can be found in our fingers are definitely permanent. It usually starts to develop dun palamang sa uh, feta, 
during the fetal life of of us habang nade-develop pa lang tayo doon sa loob ng sinapupunan ng mga parents natin nag start ng ma-develop yung dinatawag nating fingerprint pattern at least mga nasa 4 months 4 to 5 months ng ng uh, fetal life of of human being so nandun pa lamang tayo sa sinapupunan mga nasa 4 months or above uh, or four months itself, nag nag start ng ma-develop yung fingerprint natin and will not change until uh, we die and decompose. So, it's permanent. No, no matter um, how old you, you become, no? hindi magbabago yung fingerprint pattern natin. So, yan yung isa sa pinaka-importante principle na nag nagpapatibay uh, sa konsepto ng fingerprint identification. Because, if fingerprint is not permanent, then it's hardly uh, viable to use this as as uh, a way of establishing identity. No? If gaya sa halimbawa ng facial features natin, no? yung mukha natin that will uh, develop, will change over time, no? or pwede nating baguhin through surgeries and so on, then di ba, hindi, siya mag hindi siya magandang uh, halimbawa ng uh, way of establishing the identity na? yung yung mukha if if you're just basing the identity of a certain person through facial features yung mga yung mata yung size ng ilong yung size ng tenga yun yung uh, mga karakteristik na meron tayo na pwedeng ma-alter pwedeng magbago uh, through our uh, life course habang tumatanda tayo nag-iiba ang ating itsura but uh, with regards to fingerprint that is different na? kahit tumanda ka uh, kahit magkasakit ka, fingerprint will remain uh, permanent no? in, in appearance. Lumalaki lang yung uh, habang nababanat yung skin natin, lumalaki yung, yung uh, appearance ng fingerprint natin. With, but with regards to the patterns itself, it does not change. Uh, there are a lot of attempts already, medical and uh, physical attempts that was made in order to alter or uh, to attempt to alter or remove or erase the fingerprint but none of them was proven successful. Na marami nang sumubok na burahin yung kanilang fingerprint, uh, baguhin yung kanilang fingerprint through surgeries but none of them uh, had become successful. There is a case actually na nang ginawa nila is nilaplap nila yung fingerprint then pinalitan ng uh, new skin. But later on, uh, ang nangyari doon is nawala. Nawala yung kanyang fingerprint but uh, that is because tinanggal yung uh, skin mismo up to its uh, dermal papillae no? doon sa pinakailalim na ng balat. Nilaplap para palitan ng bago. So, tinapalan siya. And uh, he was considered as the, ano, I think that's Robert Rose Cupid. He was considered as the man without a fingerprint kasi nga uh, nagkaroon ng surgery, binura. But then, um, I think that that itself is already a good way of establishing identity. Da? Kung kung meron silang makuhang fingerprint doon sa crime scene na uh, plain lang siya, walang mga ridges and so on, then pwedeng gamitin yun sa kanya. And uh, there are attempts... Uh, for example, they use yung mga tinatawag nating uh, strong acid, yung muriatic acid, in order to erase or remove the fingerprints. Uh, they succeeded, but then later on, yung 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 tendency kasi, if hindi totally na damage yung yung uh, dermal papillae ng fingers natin, it will uh, come back, no? Pag uh, gumaling babalik pa rin yung mga ridge formation ng uh, fingerprints natin. The only way for you to probably remove that is if you're going to cut the upper part of your finger, no? or you're going to damage the your finger in its uh, hanggang sa dermal papillae niya, uh, if you're going to remove that. But uh, I don't know if there are some individuals who are willing to sacrifice that just to prove that they can remove their fingerprints. Okay? <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, those are the three principles that uh, governs that that uh, substantiate the concept of fingerprint identification. We have the principle of individuality. Um, fingerprint is very unique. 
principles of infallibility, fingerprint procedures or uh, fingerprint analysis follows uh, rigid scientific procedures in order to come up with, with the conclusion that they're uh, conducting. And we have the principle of permanency, the uh, fingerprint patterns that we have remain constant and does not change over time. Okay. So uh, I think that's it with regards to the principles of fingerprint. Let's now proceed to the components of fingerprint patterns. We have the ridges and the furrows. Okay, so we have here an illustration of a fingerprint. Uh, yung, yung ridges na tinatawag, those are the tiny elevations or hill-like structures found on the epidermis of the skin. So if we're going to look into the fingerprint impression that we have here, uh, yung black line dyan, kasi baliktad siya, if you're going to look closely into your fingers, into your ridges, yung, yung nakaangat dyan is the ridges. Da? Yung nakalubog dyan is the furrows. Furrows refers to the canals or depression found between ridges, yung parang kanal niya. Um... Ngayon, pag, pag uh, nagkaroon tayo ng impression, no, o yung fingerprint impression natin, nagiging baliktad yan. Kasi, ang dumidikit sa papel is yung ridges natin. Kaya yung, yung black line dyan, sa illustration natin dyan, are the ridges. And yung white line, yung mga hindi dumikit, kasi nga mas malalim, mas malalim yan kumpara sa ridges, yung white line dyan sa ating illustration are known as the furrows. Okay? Uh, these are this will play important uh, importance when we are already on the uh, ridge counting and so on. Kasi ang ang binibilang natin dito are definitely the ridges. So para hindi tayo magkalituan, uh, just a familiarization with regards to the following, no? Tignan muna natin yung mga impression natin. Kung titignan natin sa mismo sa ating mga daliri, uh, makikita natin na uh, yung mga nakaangat dyan na, are the ridges. And yung mga lubog niya, yung mga parang kanal niya are known as the furrows. Na? But if we're going to imprint, if we're going to print or make an impression of our fingerprints to uh, some medium such as papers and so on, yung, uh, you must remember that the black lines that appears in the fingerprint impression are the ridges and the white lines are the furrows okay so those are the two components of fingerprints now let's talk about the major parts of fingerprint impression we have here the core delta um, <laughs> we have the type lines and we have the pattern area so, uh, when we talk about the core, no, yung core, that's known as the center of the fingerprint pattern. No? Again, these major parts of fingerprint impression plays an important role pagdating na natin sa uh, uh, fingerprint uh, sa ridge counting, sa analysis, and so on. So, it's important that we first familiarize ourselves with regards to this uh, term and how can they be found on the fingerprint impression. Na? Sa, pag, sa pag-determine ng core, na? kasi sabi natin dito, based on the definition itself, it's known as the center of the fingerprint pattern. Na? Um, doon sa pinaka-loob-loob ng fingerprint pattern natin, makikita yung tinatawag nating core. But there are certain rules that must be followed in identifying the core in uh, pinpointing the core no? and we will be talking about those in our future discussion today familiarization muna tayo so core is also known as the inner terminus and we have also the delta the delta are the patterns that can be found on the uh, or near the divergence of the type line. Again, type line is another term and another part of the fingerprint pattern or fingerprint imp impression. Uh, so, it's really important that we must familiarize ourselves with this kasi connected sila with each other. Okay, so delta, uh, yung makikita natin doon sa pagitan uh, or sa gitna ng tinatawag nating type line. 
the other term for delta is the outer terminus. Core and delta is very much important in ridge counting and, and ridge tracing. No? Important itong mga uh, to. Kasi when, when we are going to do or conduct or perform ridge counting and ridge tracing, these uh, two are the first thing that we must look into before we can proceed with the uh, analysis. And we have the type lines. No? Nabanggit na natin yung type lines. Type lines refers to the two innermost ridges that run par uh, parallel or nearly with each other that envelope the pattern area. Again, pattern area is another term that we must be familiar of. So, type line, yan yung pumapalibot doon sa tinatawag nating pattern area. Kumbaga, siya yung barrier na, na naghihiwalay doon sa outside uh, part of the fingerprint which are also somewhat important but then uh, since the fingerprint uh, examination is more focused on the pattern area mismo na, so yung pattern area lang yung titignan muna natin I'm not saying that yung outer part no, ng part, part, uh, pattern area, yung labas ng pattern area are no longer significant kasi may importansya pa rin ang mga ito. However, uh, usually if available yung tinatawag nating pattern area, especially kung kukuha tayo ng mga rolled impression or plain impression, no, uh, kitang kita itong mga ito and the analysis is usually focused on that. But in cases ng Latin prints, yung mga prints na nakukuha natin sa crime scene, they usually don't have all of the uh, parts of fingerprint. That's why even the out, outer part of the pattern area is uh, can be considered as important. Okay? So, uh, type line, yan yung pumapalibot sa pattern area. And we have pattern area. Ang pattern area naman refers to the part of the fingerprint na that uh, where all the important elements, no, yung mga characteristic of fingerprints, can be found. No? Nandyan yung delta, nandyan yung uh, core, nandyan yung mga um, ridges natin, ridge formation natin, na importante sa, sa pag-identify ng fingerprint, no? sa pag-classify uh, ng fingerprint, nandyan lahat yan sa pattern area na tinatawag. Okay? Uh, we have here we have here the illustration, ano? Yung uh, first uh, photograph, no? Yung illustration natin doon sa taas, nandoon naki-specify yung location ng core, no? At uh, yung location ng delta, yung uh, may triangle. Yung square is the core, no? pero hindi pa yan naki-specify kasi there are a lot of ridges that can be found in the uh, in that area. Na maraming ridges yan. May meron tayong tinatawag na uh, recurving ridge. Meron tayong tinatawag na uh, rod. Da? And uh, many more. Uh, so maraming patterns or maraming uh, ridge formation na makikita dyan sa na, na lagyan ng uh, square. So, uh, later on, if we're going to be talking about the rules in identifying the core, we will be going deeper into those. No? Kasi hindi lang basta gitna ang babanatan or ang kukuni natin as a core. No? Kundi, merong mga certain rules that must be followed in identifying the core. As well as delta. No? As well as delta. Especially if uh, we're dealing with uh, a real fingerprint. Kasi mostly... In activities like this, ang ginagamit is uh, our drawings. So, it's easy if we're going to be using yung, yung mga illustration na drone na, uh, to identify the delta and the core. Kasi nga, parang ano na siya. It is already, uh, parang may, may suggestion na mismo doon sa drawing. But when we are dealing with the real fingerprint, we're in, there are different patterns that are, seems, uh, seem that that are very complex na doon tayo mas mahihirapan sa pag-identify ng core and delta that's why we need to uh, make a lot of activities with regards to this in order for you uh, for us to be familiar with regards to the 
uh, location of the core and location of the delta. No? Doon sa lower part uh, naman ng illustration natin, we have there the pattern area. No? Yung illustration number 12. Uh, yung loob nun, no? yung loob nun na na-label na pattern area, doon yung uh, kinalalagyan ng uh, delta natin, ng core natin, and the different ridge formation. Doon sa figure number 11 naman, if you can see yung tinatawag nating letter A and uh, A and B, yung black line doon na, na nag-diverge, na nag-surround doon sa tinatawag nating pattern area, yan yung tinatawag nating type line. No, yung medyo makapal na linya doon uh, na may label na letter A and B, no, na pumapalibot doon sa tinatawag nating pattern area, that's the type line. Okay? So, uh, let's jump into the three major family of fingerprints. Tinatawag natin family kasi we're, we're talking about the uh, general patterns of fingerprints. No? So, we have only three major patterns of fingerprint and those are yung tinatawag natin arches, loops, and whirls. So, uh, what are arches. So let us define first what are arches. Arches or fingerprint patterns characterized by ridge flowing from one side to the other without recurving and usually having a slight upward curve in the center making an arch like pattern. So uh, usually in arches natin don't have core and delta. No? By the way, I have uh, prepared a module or notes with regards to this and I do hope ma i-download yung muna before uh, <laughs> listening ay <laughs> late na kasi before uh, proceeding with with this lecture kasi meron din doon yung illustration and as well as the definition na mi minimi minimize lang ako ng words dito sa presentation but all the details can be found onto the module that I will be including with uh, this presentation. So, arches yung tinatawag natin uh, yung, yung flow ng ng, ng uh, ridges natin will coming either from the left or right. No? Uh, diretso lang siya, then medyo may slant pataas doon sa gitna. No? And then, nagpo-form nga ng tinatawag natin arc pattern. So, uh, Arches can be divided into two. Meron yung tinatawag natin plain arch. No? And we have the tented arch. We have here an illustration no? for plain arch and tented arch. No? Uh, I would like to thanks also Miss uh, Jamina for the illustration. I uh, borrowed your output for the presentation. We have here the plain arch and tented arch. So plain arch, no, kung makita nyo, uh, yung flow ng ridges natin is coming from uh, the side, either left or right, and then nag-flow lang siya papunta doon sa opposite side. However, medyo merong pataas doon sa, sa middle part of the pattern. Kung ganyan yung pattern natin, uh, matatawag yan na uh, arch. So, dalawa ang uri ng arch. We have plain arch and tented arch. Yung tented arch lang, ang pagkakaiba lang yan is meron yung tinatawag nating abrupt upward curve. No? Uh, look into the illustration uh, presented. Meron siyang biglang pataas. No? Unlike doon sa plain arch na uh, gradual yung pagtaas ng uh, ridges natin. Doon sa tented arch, kung mapansin nyo, parang merong patusok. No? Doon sa pinaka middle part ng pattern natin, which causes the abrupt uh, abrupt uh, raising of the ridges natin. And usually, parang ang formation ng tented arch natin looks or appears to have uh, yung, yung nag, parang nagtetent yung appearance niya. While doon sa plain arch is parang uh, burol or bundok yung kanyang appearance. No? Kung biglang patulis, no? kung mapansin nyo may rod doon or may patusok doon sa gitna ng ng uh, patusok doon sa gitna ng pattern natin for for arches no then that will be considered as tented arch anyway it's very easy to identify even even doon sa mga plain impression 
natin if if the pattern is tented arch or plain arch kasi nga basta meron kang nakita na parang patusok doon which causes the abrupt raising of the ridges then you can consider that as tented arch and if wala plain lang siya smooth flowing lang yung yung ridges natin from the uh, other either side no papunta doon sa opposite side then that will be considered as plain arch you you can try also looking it to your uh, fingerprint patterns no directly with your eye if uh, these patterns appears into your fingerprints no konti lang ang nagkakaroon ng ganyang patterns majority of people or majority of individuals are having yung tinatawag nating uh, whirl pattern then next or followed by loops and konting percentage lang yung nagkakaroon ng arch pattern Okay, so we have here also the loops. No? Uh, what are loops? Loops are patterns which one or more ridge enter on either side of the impression and recurves halfway, terminating on the same side it is started. You know the difference kasi doon sa nauna natin, doon sa arch. No? Yung, yung ridges doon sa arches natin, nang gagaling sa isang side, and then nagte-terminate on the opposite side. Da? So kumbaga dumaan lang siya, hindi na siya bumalik. While on loops, da, yung mga loops pattern natin na tinatawag, kung saan nagsimula yung ridge natin, magre-recurve siya doon sa pinakagitna and then babalik kung saan siya nagsimula. Those are considered as loops, uh, loop. Da? From the word itself, loop, which is umiikot, bumabalik. Da? And uh, usually, yung loops natin has core and delta. By the way, arches don't have core and delta. I think nabanggit na natin yan. We have two types of loop. We have, uh, uh, we have two types of loop pattern. We have ulnar loop and radial loop. So, look into the impression. Um, ang loops natin, it's very much important that we must determine first whether the pattern was taken from the right or left hand kasi uh, pwedeng magkabaliktad yan. But then, remember that in identifying whether the loop is an ulnar loop or radial loop is whether the opening of the uh, of the recurves whether the opening of the recurve is to the uh, radial bone na tinatawag or the ulnar bone natin. Na? So, uh, the radial bone can be found on the thumb and the ulnar bone can be found or uh, can be found on the little finger. So, if the opening, na yung opening ng, ng uh, loop natin, kung saan nag-terminate yung loop natin, is towards the... Um, towards the thumb, no? towards the thumb, whether that's from the left or right, then that is considered as radial, uh, radial loop. But if the opening of the, of the recurve of the loop pattern is towards the little finger, no? nakabuka yung opening ng loop natin sa, towards the little finger, either uh, of the left or right hand then that is considered as ulnar loop so yun lang yung tatandaan natin kung saan nag-open yung recurve ng loop pattern natin kung nag-open siya towards no, papunta doon sa thumb natin either both hand then that is radial if ang opening niya is towards the little finger no, nakabuka siya doon sa direction ng little finger that is ulnar loop okay but uh, of course, in uh, again, it's very much important to identify the, the exact pattern. No? Di natin pwede ang uh, loop lamang if that's ulnar or radial loop. No? Uh, in fingerprint classification, they're uh, important malaman natin kung ano yung exact pattern ng, uh, ng fingerprint na yan for the purpose of uh, classifying them. Da, uh, effectively okay so those are the loop pattern that we have you, you try to look also again into your fingerprint if uh, ganun nga ba so uh, that is with regards to loops now let's proceed to 
worlds. No? So, medyo marami ito. We have three uh, types of worlds so far. So, yung plain world na tinatawag natin, that's the regular uh, regular world. And it is defined as the patterns in which the ridge uh, forms a series of circle. Na may uh, spiral-like pattern doon sa pinaka gitna or near the core. No? So, meron siyang paikot, pabilog. Doon sa loop natin, di ba, uh, nag-recurve siya halfway. Doon naman sa world natin, there must be at least one uh, ridge that form a circle, that, that, that forms a, a complete circle. Na yung talagang umikot siya ng uh, 360 degrees so far. So, if there were uh, circular ridges that can be found in the middle or near the core, da, then that will be considered as whirls. Okay? Whirls are pattern in which the ridges form a series of circle or, circle or spirals around the core or the axis. And uh, the difference between loop and whirls uh, is that a whirl has a core and two deltas, while a uh, loop has one core and one delta. Uh, arches don't have either. So, uh, we have uh, different types of whirl. We have central pocket loop whirl. Da? These uh, are types of uh, whirl we're in, in, in the middle. Doon sa pinakagitna is parang merong loop. Da? Actually, ang, ang central pocket loop whirl appears to be a loop. Para siyang uh, loop. Either radial or ulnar. The, the only difference is that doon sa pinakagitna niya, merong maliit doon na whirl. So, merong maliit doon na ridges or pattern na kung saan uh, bumuo siya ng isang uh, complete circle. Umikot siya ng 360 uh, degrees. So, if, if merong kang makitang ganun doon sa pinakagitna ng pattern, then that will be treated as a central pocket loop whirl or that, that will be classified as such. No? Um... We have also the uh, double loop whirl, no? So, ang double loop whirl naman is, meron tayong tinatawag na, from the word itself, double loop. Doon sa appearance ng fingerprint natin sa pinaka-middle niya, may makita kang parang dalawang uh, loop na nag-umiikot, uh, no? In, in, parang na, nag, nag uh, you know, the yin and yang pattern, uh, they, they are forming like that. No, ganun yung finoform nila so dyan sa illustration natin dyan you can see that there are two loops na parang uh, umiikot in, in, in a manner na, na kung saan is parang nagsasalubong na hindi so it does not appear to have a circular a circular form but then there are two loops that can be found into the uh, pattern area and that will be treated as double loop world na that will be treated as double loop world. Why? Because uh, in that pattern, meron tayong tinatawag na two deltas that can be found there. Okay? And lastly, we have uh, accidental loop world. Ang accidental loop world are defined as a pattern in which two or more different uh, types of fingerprint patterns combines with each other. So, it can be a combination of a loop and a world, no? Or it can be a combination of um, a plain arch and a loop or plain arch and a world. So, kung may dalawang pattern kang makita doon sa pattern area, na, may dalawang fingerprint pattern ka na makita doon, such as uh, dalawang, uh, alibawa, nag-combine ng loop and world doon sa area, na, dalawa yung nakikita mo doon, then you will treat that as an accidental loop world. So, we have also an illustration with regards to that. Okay? So, uh, so far, those are the uh, different types of or different uh, patterns of fingerprint that we have. No? Um, in some other references, may mga nadagdag pa kasi dyan, but uh, for the purpose of this lecture, I'm just including uh, the yung, yung commonly accepted patterns that we have and uh, we usually encounter in the fingerprint identification analysis no? or fingerprint filing. So, we have there the different types of that, whirls, arches, and loops. I do hope that 
uh, it is clearly illustrated into uh, the illustration that we have submitted by one of our students. So uh, I do hope that uh, we learned something. We learned something to in this lecture. And if you have questions relevant to what we had discussed, don't hesitate to ask them. Comment them. Uh, comment down on the comment section below for questions, suggestions, clarifications, and other matters. Okay. So uh, that's it for this lecture. No? Download the module that I have uh, prepared for further reading. And uh, thank you for listening. See you. And have a good day.